Our guy Brandon wrote on this week and asked, what's the difference in pricing between centralized lighting and wireless lighting? My guess is the answer will surprise you. And if you're not sure what centralized lighting is, I'll give you a quick recap. Lighting is a little confusing because there's a lot of different terms out there that really mean the same thing or variations of the same thing. So we're gonna keep it simple and there's three buckets. There's wireless lighting, there's panelized or centralized lighting, same thing, and what we call low voltage lighting. And we're just gonna touch on this briefly. Wireless lighting is what most people are familiar with or have used. Zigbee, Z-Wave lighting, the kind of things that work with Apple HomeKit, Amazon Alexa. And it's usually gonna be used in an existing home as a retrofit. You replace the existing switch on the wall with a wireless switch or if it's a smaller lighting application, you're usually gonna go wireless lighting. Centralized lighting means that the visible light switch on the wall or dimmer is removed and hidden in a panel that looks just like your circuit breaker somewhere out of sight. Usually you replace that light switch with a six button keypad that can control anything from lighting to shades to music, or if there's multiple lights in the room, it can control every one of those lights from a single keypad. And we call it panelized or centralized because we're literally housing those lights in a panel, a lighting panel, and it's centralized out of sight. Otherwise, for all intents and purposes, it works the same for you, the homeowner, when you use wireless or centralized lighting, the actual user experience is very similar. The reason that people like to go with centralized lighting is primarily aesthetics, and there can actually be some cost savings as you get into bigger, larger projects. I'll cover that in a second. Low voltage lighting is a weird one. Usually when people talk about low voltage lighting, what they're actually referencing is the ability to control the color and the color temperature of the lights and the light fixtures. And they want a lighting package that delivers that experience, which usually requires a low voltage lighting package. So we'll go into that a different time. The important thing to know here is that low voltage lighting can be controlled by either wireless or panelized lighting, although it's usually controlled in some kind of a panelized lighting solution. Okay, so now let's get to Brandon's question. What is the difference in price between panelized lighting and wireless lighting? Traditionally, it's assumed that wireless lighting is cheaper. Most people just assume that if you're gonna do a lighting package, you're gonna save thousands and thousands of dollars doing wireless lighting. That's not actually the case. It has much more to do with volume and scale than whether or not you're using wireless lighting or panelized lighting. Inherently, a panelized lighting system is deployed with more scale, meaning more light switches and more dimmers, more ceiling fans, but the actual cost isn't that much difference. In fact, just hardware alone, there's sort of a tipping point where panelized lighting often becomes less expensive than wireless lighting. I'm not gonna exhaust every imaginable price point. All the different lighting manufacturers, Lutron, Control4, Savant, Crestron, they all have their own lighting solutions, both wireless and panelized lighting. And there's things to like about all of them. But what I want you to understand is that there's different ways of deploying panelized lighting within the same manufacturer or brand. So we can use what's called low voltage keypads, which just like it sounds, the keypad is not hardwired to any light in the home. It doesn't have any high voltage running to the keypad. And that keypad is sending a signal or control back to the brain, and then that brain tells the system which lights to turn on and off. The way that we typically design and deploy a panelized lighting system, the main keypad in every room or the main light switch in every room is what we call a keypad dimmer which means that it's wired up like a regular dimmer and controls the main set of lights in that room. If it's the kitchen, it's the ceiling cans. If it's the great room or the main living area, it's the ceiling cans. But it has five buttons that control additional lights or whatever automated scenes you want in the home, like shades or music or a media scene. And the idea for that is so that if the system ever went down, right? You would still have control of the main lights, just like any other light switch. You wouldn't have to go and reboot it or call your tech. That's the way we learned. That's how we design it. So I want to make sure that's the baseline for this as you're looking at pricing is understanding that there's some nuances. What really changes is the volume of dimmers or switches throughout the house. So I'll give you some simple numbers. Let's say that we have a home that has 47 total light switches and keypads. We're going to go 15 keypads and 32 dimmers. In that kind of a setup, the panelized lighting system is going to run you about 3,000 more than the wireless lighting setup. Now, as the size of the home increases or the number of lighting loads increases, that price changes. If we have a home with 95 light switches, so we'll say 15 keypads and 80 light switches or dimmers, we're actually going to save $2,000 for the hardware on a panelized lighting system 
versus a wireless lighting system. Now, I've heard a lot of dealers push back on this and they'll say, well, that's not totally fair. The programming is going to be way different. So let's just look at the hardware. If we're talking about panelized lighting versus wireless lighting, there's a threshold. And when you go over that threshold, panelized lighting actually starts to become less expensive. It used to be a rule of thumb that if you had a home that was over 10,000 square feet, that that was less expensive to go panelized lighting. But there are a lot of homes now that are incorporating a lot of different lighting. They've got linear light, or a lot of people look at as rope light. You've got your ceiling fans, you have the bathroom fans, you have under cabinet lights, in cabinet lights, exterior lights. If you just want a few spots to be controlled, most of the time it makes more sense to go wireless. If you're looking at it and going, I want every single light in the house, well, then panelized lighting usually makes a lot of sense. And my own personal belief on the programming part of it is that while programming can be more expensive with panelized lighting, it usually isn't too much more expensive. Sometimes panelized lighting installations can get really advanced and there's a lot of custom programming on those keypads. It's really getting beyond lighting control and it's actually much more part of the full smart home integration experience on a very high-end luxury installation. And there are a lot of clients out there that do that, and there are a lot of dealers out there that program systems like that. But what we see typically is that a panelized lighting system is pretty bare bones at the keypad. The keypad turns the main lights of the room on and off. If the room has additional lighting loads, it turns those lights off. And there may be another button that's programmed to turn on your favorite playlist for your music system. And in that world, that amount of programming isn't any different for that keypad than it would be if we had a wireless keypad. So we typically look at it and go, panelized lighting and wireless lighting are actually pretty similar in price. Panelized is slightly more expensive till you get over a certain threshold, and then it can be actually less expensive. And so what I would encourage you to do is to think more of, do I want every light in the home to be controlled, or do I just want some of the lights to be controlled? And that'll help you answer this question better than pricing. It's been a minute. We're excited to kick back up a whole new series of these videos. If you haven't already, make sure you click the link in this video. Join our group. It's totally free. There's a whole community of other homeowners like yourself in there sharing ideas of what works for them. We'd love to have you there. So be sure to click that link and we can't wait to see you. If you like this video and you have questions about any kind of tech in your home, leave them in the comments and we'll make a video as soon as we can for you.